leave us too. For we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia. Her father and myself, lawful espials, will so bestow ourselves that, seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge, and gather by him as he is behaved, if to be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer, slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and them to die to sleep no more and by sleep to say we am the heartache <laughs> and the thousand natural shocks that flush his air to near juke. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die. To sleep. To sleep for chance to dream. I there surrub. When we then sleep of death, what dreams may come we have shuffled off this mortal coil. Must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. Who would Bartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose bore no traveler returns, puzzles the will, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than turn fly to others we know not of. Thus conscious does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution sicklied over for the pale cast of thought. In enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard the currents turn awry. And lose the name of action. Soft you now. Fear of feeling. Nymph in thy horizons, be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well. My lord, mm. I have remembrances of yours that I have long longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I, never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words so sweet as breath imposed, as made things more rich. 
their perfume lost. Take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly. For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bond, and honesty shall translate beauty into his likeness. This was some time a paradox. But now time gives it proof. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord. You made me believe so. <laughs> you should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to your nunnery. Or thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. Heavenly powers restore him. I heard a part of your paintings too. <laughs> God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, and you amble, and you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures. You make your wantonness your ignorance. I say, we shall have no more marriage. All of those that are married already, all except one, shall live. The rest shall choke as they are. To nunnery go. Farewell. A noble mind is here or thrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, a glass of fashion in the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows. Now see his noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of two time and harsh. The unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen, see what I see.